All right, in today's lesson here, we're looking at the integral of x squared over the square root of 1 minus x cubed dx. So I'm going to go ahead and take the integral of this. Uh, so <clears throat> when you're looking at this one here, if you'll notice the denominator, I have 1 minus x cubed. In the top, I have an x squared. Well, the derivative of this has an x squared in it. So that's a good indication that a substitution would work for something like this. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to let t uh, equal 1 minus x cubed. And therefore, dt is going to equal minus 3x squared dx. From that, we have minus 1 third dt is going to be equal to x squared dx. So now I can go ahead and do my substitution. I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to replace the x squared dx with one, minus 1 third dt. And then I'm going to go ahead and replace the 1 minus x cubed with a t. So this will be root of t on the bottom. Clean this up. This becomes minus 1 third, the integral of dt over root t. Like always, when you're working with roots, you usually end up changing them to exponential form here. So this will be t to the minus 1 half dt. And we want to go ahead and take the integral of this. So integrating this, we have minus 1 third out front. And I need to think of something whose integral, after taking its derivative, I should say, becomes t to the minus 1 half. Well, if I have a t to the half here, uh, you go ahead and use your power rule. You drop that down, subtract 1. You'll get the minus 1 half, but I'll have a minus... I'll have a half, I should say, out front. So put a 2 there to make up for that. And then you have plus some constant value k. So this becomes minus 2 thirds, the square root of t plus k. And like we were talking about, I had let t equal 1 minus x cubed. So this becomes the square root of 1 minus x cubed plus some constant value k. So here's one example of a quick substitution question. Again, just making that connection that the derivative of the bottom here had that top in there. All right, let's take a look at another question. All right, let's take a look at a new problem here. This is the integral of sine cubed x cos cubed x dx. So the first thing we want to do here is you want to break this down into something you know. So what it looks a lot like we know the following identity. I know the 2 sine x cos x. I know that that's equal to the sine of 2x. So therefore, I know the sine x times cos of x must equal 1 half sine of 2x, which means that sine cubed x cos cubed x must equal 1 over 8 sine cubed of 2x. So doing this substitution right away, you've kind of simplified this a bit. This would be 1 eighth the sine cubed of 2x dx um, looks a little cleaner. And now you don't have the product of two trig expressions to have to work with here, just the one. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that 1 8 out. And again, it, integration works linearly. You can pop that out. So this becomes the following. Problem that happens here is we need a cos involved, right? Any take, anytime you take the derivative of sine or cos, you're going to have the opposite involved. So I need to incorporate a cos with this, so what I'm going to do is I'll replace a sine squared of 2x with a 1 minus cos squared of 2x, and I can put that uh, sine of x back down. Then I'm going to go ahead and distribute the integration sine, so this is 1 eighth, this will be the integral of sine of, this should have been, sorry, one little mistake there, that should have been a 2x dx. So this will be the integral of sine of 2x dx minus the integral of sine of 2x cos squared of 2x dx. That whole thing multiplied by 1 eighth. So now if we take a look here, let's give us a little more room. I've got a 1 eighth, the integral of sine of 2x dx minus 1 eighth the integral of sine of 2x cos squared of 2x dx. So I can take the integration of this here with a little bit of an adjustment, right? This will be fairly easy because what do I have to take the derivative of to get the sine of 2x? That's going to be negative cos of 2x. But the issue here is chain rule will kick in and I'll have an extra power of 2 here that I don't have. So I'll have to divide this by 2. 
and that'll be the um, integral of this expression. So that's taken care of. Here we should do a substitution. I'm going to go ahead and I'll do my letters here. I'm going to let t equal the cos of 2x. And therefore, dt is going to be negative 2, the sine of 2x dx, right? As the derivative of cos is negative sine 2x times chain rule kicks in, derivative of the inside is 2. So I can go ahead and do that substitution here. Therefore, from here, I know that my cos of 2x I can replace with a t squared as I let t equal the cos of 2x, therefore that's just t squared. I have a sine 2x and a dx here, I have a sine 2x and a dx here, therefore I bring that 2 to the other side, this will end up being minus 1 half dt. So continuing this on here, I get minus 1 over 16, the cos of 2x, minus plus, I should say, when I put these two together here, get plus 1 over 16, the integral of t squared dt. And that is easy for us to take the integration of. Um, this would be the integral of cos 2x, and this is plus 1 over 16. When you take the integral of t squared, well, derivative of t cubed is going to give me t squared. I'll have a 3 out in front that I want to get rid of. So I have to put a third out there, plus some constant value, k. And finishing this off, we get 1 over 16 cos of 2x uh, plus, that'll be 30 and 18, so that'll be plus 1 over 48 t cubed plus k. You can go ahead and substitute what t is. If you recall, we let t equal cos of 2x, so this would be cos cubed of 2x plus some constant value, k. And this becomes our answer for the following problem here, negative 1 over 16 cos of 2x plus 1 over 48 cos cubed of 2x plus some constant value, k. And again, this was achieved just by going ahead and doing, breaking this down, using our identities to get it down to a single expression, and then kind of breaking this up with um, our coses and sines of different powers, right? Notice I had coses and sines to begin with, but these are the same power. It makes it difficult. You need one a degree less, so your substitution works. And that's what we did here. Uh, this integration became fairly straightforward, and then a substitution on this one uh, gave us our final answer. All right, thank you.